As mana whenua, we understand, actually as human beings, we understand the experiences of colonisation, dehumanisation, false narratives, ethnic cleansing, degradation, starvation, epidemics, wrongful imprisonment and execution of our people. We stand here today united, marching for peace and a permanent ceasefire. Aotearoa must play its part by boycotting, sanctioning, divesting from Israel. We demand integrity from our government. We call for an end to the settler colonialism that Zionism represents and the violence that inevitably accompanies it. It is not one year of genocide. It has been 76 years since the start of the ongoing Nakba. It has been 76 years of bombs, of displacement, of a refusal of human rights, of self-determination, of dignity. Now, it has not just been a year of the most grotesque and brutal violence that we've seen in our lifetimes, but what we also need to reflect on is how we've come together, how we have learned, how we have unlearned, how we have relearned, how we have educated ourselves and each other. There are not enough words, but what is more important is the connection between us, the relationships that we have formed, the community that we have built. We are here to say, free, free, we are here to say, in the genocide! We are here to say, fuck Zionism! Justice for Palestine recently commissioned a survey about the amount of New Zealanders who support recognising a Palestinian state and support imposing sanctions on Israel. 40% of New Zealanders want to recognise a Palestinian state. 42% of New Zealanders wish the government would sanction Israel. That's a lot of New Zealanders. The government has left a major, major vacuum in this conversation. We are so angry. We are so angry at the lack of leadership we are seeing in this country at the moment. It is pathetic. It is utterly pathetic to tie our foreign policy to other colonial countries around this world in a conversation that is vitally important. As an indigenous person from this land, I'm disgusted. So uh, Lebanon's been in the news quite a lot lately. Um, and here it's become a name for Israeli power and violence and impunity and a lot of dead Palestinians and dead Lebanese. But in the Arab world, South Lebanon is known as the place where Israeli ambitions and hubris go to die. And die it has, time and again, and it'll die again. Alternative Jewish voices and our friends at Dayenu, we acknowledge the history of Palestine's pain. We hold people accountable for this illegal occupation. These days, like you, we struggle to hold our outrage and our horror without conceding to hatred or despair. We cling to the vision of a dignified future for everyone who lives between the river and the sea. Our
protest is our demand that we must all be loved and safe and self-determining and free. Our language, our language and our culture is a part of the resistance. We are resistance, resisting by using our language and that's why we have chosen to introduce Arabic chants to all of our protests. Just like our ancestors, all the way from Palestine, all the way from Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, and Yemen, they have resisted against Zionism. They have resistance and resisted against genocide. They have resisted against ethnic cleansing. So do we here today as Arabs in the diaspora and all of you here today resist against genocide, against Zionism, against ethnic cleansing. We will remain. All of you standing here today using our language, al Arabiya, that is part of the resistance. So I want you to say, we will resist. We will resist. We will resist. We will resist. Okay. So the first uh, chant goes, Min al Maya lil Maya, Palestine Hurriya. So from water to water, Palestine is free. Yalla, let's go. getting here right well done getting here we haven't just been marching today we've been marching for the last year and many of us have been marching for much much longer past present and future is the right concept for this moment in fact past present and future is the stuff that people have had to fasten themselves to in all our most difficult moments in history. And our, and our people have a saying, right, in Palestine. And I was talking to my dad about this last night. And lots of cultures have a saying something like this. But the translation, like in English, it goes something like, our grandparents planted so that we can eat. And we plant so that our grandchildren may eat. What I want to remind you of is that we've got a history. And when we bring that co-papa of our BDS movement here, we're also building on a solid history of struggling against settler colonialism in this land. Let's not forget, let's not forget that a hundred years ago, Māori were nearly driven to the point of extinction by European settlers. It was told, and, and, and Fire Kath was telling me about this for a long time, even when she was growing up. They were told that Māori were a dying race, but look at Māori today. I mean, Māori might be facing some attacks. Māori might be facing some attacks, but Māori are one million strong. One million strong. So we knew when we arrived here, that we had to take our co-papa of our movement and understand it in this context. And if there's anyone who knows about organizing in this context, it's Māori. So we are going to lead this campaign that we are launching today with the values that are embedded in this land. We are going to treat people with manakitanga. We are gonna bring people with us. We are gonna respect the tikanga of the cloak of peace that was laid over Pornikī of powerful, non-violent resistance with our words and with our actions. So we know what we're here to do. We have not only the wisdom of Palestinians and South Africans and many other activists who have come before us and brought apartheid regimes, genocidal regimes to their knees. It has been done before and it will be done again. 
and we are also going to utilize the strategies that Māori have utilized in this land for generations to ensure not only their survival but their continual thrival in Aotearoa and we are going to fuse those two things together and we are here to launch a campaign. So I am about to get you all to sign a petition. I'm going to walk you through it. But one thing I'm going to remind you before we go there is I do not want to hear us getting hopeless, okay? I know that it can be really hard when we are watching the news and we are watching the bombs rain down, knowing that we cannot do more right now to save people right now. And I know that is what we wish. I know that is what we, we wish. But we need to be clear. The only way that this becomes futile is if we give up. we're just not going to give up but we are going to get smarter we are going to get smarter I want us to start understanding ourselves as the mass movement we are so the campaign strategy is simple we've already been campaigning around Kiwi Saver but one critical thing that we need to remember about BDS is that it's a targeted campaign and it targets things that are critical to the maintenance of the occupation, the apartheid, this genocidal settler colonial regime and it takes those things, that infrastructure and it snips those cords and that's what we're about to do Fano. we're about to do that. So you've all heard about KiwiSaver, you all know we've got our money invested in Israel, in fact if anything I want to tell you something real sad. Because while we've been out here marching, actually, our investments in Israel through our Kiwi Saver have gone up 20%. But don't you worry, I've got a quick fix for that. In fact, we all do. We've been working with our friends at Stop Arming Israel, friends up and down the country. Also, the co convener of Justice for Palestine, Kate Stone, shout out to her. She's been doing heaps of mahi on this campaign. We are launching a campaign against the provider that has the most invested in a company that is very entrenched in this apartheid regime. So I want you to put your hands up here today with no shame, no shame at all. And I'm going to put my hand up too. If you bank with ASB, put your hands up. It's okay if you do, Fano. It's okay if you do. That's good. We've got to find more of us. Because what we're going to do, Fano, is we're going to be signing a petition and we're going to be giving them a deadline. We're going to be giving them a deadline. November 29th, divest or we walk, all of us. And our job now is to reach the 42% of people out there that agree with us and bring more on board. This is using the strategies that have worked time and time again in history. We show them that it's not just about one person walking away. It's not just about two. It's about hundreds of us. It's about thousands of us. Let's use our leverage. Die best or we switch. I stand here and feel that hope again. But still, tangled up next to that is a far more familiar feeling. The fear. For the first time, I remember we have clarity and strength and movement and we have people who care and I cannot help but wonder how long it will last. Everyone moves on to the newer, shinier issue, and we are left wondering where all our powerful new allies have gone. We cry on each other's shoulders, and we mourn the opportunity where this movement could have enacted real change, and we go back to plotting how to make our suffering consumable for the masses. How else can we glamorize our struggle so that people might care? Why does no one care? I don't want to believe that this is the inevitable outcome again. I don't want to live my life dreading the day that all of you move on. I don't want to let go of my hope. It's beautiful and I want to hold on to it. But no matter how much I beg and plead, there's only so much I can do. My voice and the voices of all Palestinians can only carry so far as every political power in the world tries to snuff them out. I can only translate the cries screamed in my mother tongue for so long. 
It is the responsibility of you now to prove to me that my hope has not been misplaced.